before we jump into how to use Monai and what exactly it does, let's talk about the challenge that you're most likely going to be trying to solve using tools like Monai. And that's going to be the challenge of doing medical scan segmentation. So for those of you who don't know what segmentation is, I have an example of just normal image segmentation on the right here, which is considered a pretty solved problem at this point. Um, so the idea is we have an image and then we're trying to create what's called a mask that shows the different parts of the image and separates them out. So in this example, we have this image here of a cat and a dog. And the goal is to be able to feed this through a model, and then the model should give us something like this, which is our mask, where you can see we have the dog separated out from the cat, separated out from the sofa, and you can even see the window a little bit in the background. So that's the idea behind image segmentation. And this isn't too hard to do. Um, because most machine and deep learning frameworks and tools are built about around being able to bring in images in normal formats like JPEG and PNG and things like that, which, you know, a normal 2D image like this probably is. But let's focus now on doing this with medical scans, right? Because there's some unique challenges that come along with that. The first and probably the most obvious is that a lot of these scans that we have from our MRI machines and things like that are not 2D, they're in 3D. Um, and building upon that, they're not going to be in your normal JPEG or normal image formats that we're used to and that our tools that we're using are used to using. They're going to be in uncommon data formats that we'll talk about in a second here. And the final big challenge with doing medical scan segmentation has to do with actually training your segmentation model. And uh, data scarcity is going to be a bit of an issue for you there for the most part. Um, there's a lot of restrictions around medical data. As you probably know, um, you can't just go out and put all your scans on the internet for people to use. That's going to be a severe breach of uh, patient privacy. Um, so you have to not only deal with there not being a ton of data, but also with the fact that making your annotations for your segmentation can be very time consuming. Because if you're trying to pick out, say, a tumor in different scans, you need someone with the knowledge and skill to be able to pick out those tumors accurately and label them for your examples, right? You don't want someone who has no idea about what these tumors are and what they're supposed to look like trying to make your examples for you because your model's only going to be as good as the data coming into it. So how does Monai fit into the picture here? On the left, I have an example of a scan and then of a segmentation mask. So if you look closely, there's some little um, kind of fuzzy spots here, and those line up with these marked areas on here. So the idea is if you overlay this on top of this, you get these kind of fuzzy areas highlighted, and we're going to assume that's what we're interested in. Um, so what we want is to be able to create a model that takes in these scans without anyone having to do any finding of the regions that we want on it, and then it should be able to give us the segmentation here, showing us exactly where those areas are that we're interested in. So let's say, for example, we want to use something like PyTorch. You can uh, put any deep learning framework here, but PyTorch is going to be the easiest to use with Monai. It's kind of, Monai is kind of built with PyTorch in mind. You can use it with other frameworks, but this is what I'd recommend. But this is where we're, we're going to build our model, right? Well, there's a bit of a disconnect from being able to create our PyTorch model and then feeding our scan into it. Because like I said, it's 3D, it's a weird file format. We don't really know how to feed it into our model because models are pretty picky in terms of the data format you give them. You need to specify what the data format is and it needs to be prepared to accept it. Um, and that's where Monai comes in. It's going to help bridge that gap between having just our scan and having our model and then being able to combine the two to actually do some meaningful work with these scans. So let's talk a little bit more deeply about Monai as a library here. Um, so we have kind of three different sections in Monai right now. The first is core, and that's what we're going to primarily be dealing with today. Actually, I think we, do, we don't touch any of the other ones at all other than to briefly mention them to you. But core is going to be the main set of features for Monai, um, so things like how functionalities for feeding our 3D scans into PyTorch. And there's also some other things like uh, 
image loading functions uh, transformations. Those are pretty useful and we're, we're going to get into those in a little bit. Uh, and some basic segmentation tools to help you in labeling things like that. But if you're just looking for something to help you create your initial labels, your initial data set for training, um, Monai does have another tool called Monai Label, which is this right here. Um, and it's supposed to help you with that. You actually use different models to help you with your annotation and segmentation. I can't say I've dealt too much with label because it is still very beta at the time of this recording. Um, so I had some issues getting it to run, but if you're looking for a tool to help you with that, this, this is probably something to look into, especially as they get up in the versions here a little bit. And then deploy is also still pretty early in its life cycle. Um, as you can see, both of these are still version 0.5 here. Uh, but the idea is that with deploy, once you have your model, um, this will help you deploy that model and actually be able to use it in your real world situations. And um, especially with medical data and medical applications, you have a lot of things you need to keep in mind about security and privacy and how you deal with your data. And from what I understand, these things are kind of kept in mind when they may deploy and should help you in that journey if you're already at that point with one of your projects.